Today, I'm gonna to be doing QRP on the HF bands, looking for DX. And if you know what that means, congratulations, you're a ham. For the rest of you, that means I'm gonna be doing low power ham radio on the high frequency bands, and DX just means long distance. I'm gonna be looking to talk to somebody either on the other side of the country, or maybe even another continent. My first contact with this radio, the Zygu X5105, was from Atlanta, Georgia here to Slovenia in uh, Central or Eastern Europe. So that's a long distance contact. That's what I'm gonna be trying to do today. I'm gonna do three things in this video. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to build a dipole antenna, a simple dipole. Then I'm gonna show you how I put it up in a tree. Then I'm gonna try to make some DX contacts. This is gonna be fun, let's get going. For today's setup, I'm gonna be using my Zygu X5105 high frequency radio. This is a great portable QRP radio because it's got everything built in. It's got a battery, it's got an antenna tuner, and it covers all the HF bands and even six meters on the, on the VHF side. So this is a great little portable radio. It's even got a built-in mic. I'm not gonna use a mic today. I'm just gonna talk into it like it was a handy talkie. And speaking of handy talkies, that's what this puts out, five watts of power, which is the same as my Baofeng handheld transceiver. So just five watts out of this thing, but with the right antenna, with the right conditions, I should be able to talk to people pretty far away. Let's talk dipoles. Dipole antennas are one of the most simple and most effective antennas hams can use. It consists of some coax and two links of wire. And the calculation you use, depending on what frequency you want to transmit on, uh, you can calculate the length of wire you need, and that calculation is right there. There it is. So you can calculate the length. So this one, I'm tuning it for the 20 meter band uh, hopefully I've got this cut to the right length for the single sideband portion of the 20 meter band. Uh, it's about 16 feet 4 inches on each leg and there's two legs. The way this works, I bought this little dipole gimmick, uh, I think for about $5. Uh, it connects on one side and the other side, but if you don't have a gimmick, it's really easy to make this dipole. All you need to do is get some coax, uh, take the coax apart, and you need to solder one end of the dipole to the solid core of the coax cable and the other side to the shielding, uh, the kind of uh, wrapped around shielding on the, on the coax. So solder one side to the shield, one side to the core, and you've got yourself a dipole. So now what I'm gonna do is find some trees back here and put it up. I'll show you how I do that. To get one end of the dipole up into a tree branch, I'm gonna use this, it's a arborist uh, rope with a, with a 12 ounce arborist bag on the end of it. I'm gonna use this like a sling to get the rope up into the tree. Once the rope's up there, I just tie one end of the dipole to the rope and hoist it up. It's as easy as that. You need two, uh, two lengths of rope to accomplish this. It's really pretty easy. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this in one throw. have to do is tie the rope and wire together then I can hoist it up in the tree that will do all right here it goes up into the tree and then I'm gonna do the other end So I got the uh, dipole strung up, I've got it plugged into my Zygu, and uh, now I'm going to try to make a contact. We'll see what we can do. One of the great things about the Zygu X5105 
is the fact that it's got a built-in SWR meter and graph and you can see that right now it is graphing the SWR on 20 meters from about 14.1 megahertz up to 14.3 something and it is flat I mean right around one to one which is great don't have to use the internal tuner uh, it's resonant pretty much throughout the entire single sideband portion of the 20 meter band that's great it's several days later I tried to make a contact for about 25 minutes there wasn't a lot of activity on the 20 meter band uh, and then it started to rain uh, I waited a few days. It's nice out today. So I'm going to try again, see if we can't make a contact. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Uh, Kilo Echo 8, what's the record? All right, Kilo Echo 8, Lima, Fox, India. Alpha Echo 8, Oscar, thanks for the holiday. My name is Tom, my location. Is Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima, QRP. Kilowatt 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. CQ Nebraska QSO party, CQ Nebraska QSO party. Kilowatt Victor 0 India, KEV 0 I. Anybody anywhere, Nebraska QSO party, Kilowatt Victor 0 India. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima, QRP. QSO parties are great. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Anyway, uh, QSO parties are great for QRP people because they usually have nice antennas and they're trying to pull people out for points. So they'll put some effort into pulling the signal out. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. The Alpha, Alpha. Is it Alpha, Alpha 2, Lima, Kilo, is that it? Uh, the Alpha, Alpha, try again. Uh, Sierra Alpha Radio, Papa, Sparpy. People outside of Nebraska will try to get all the different counties or regions in the state, and they can compete as well. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Uh, he's not going to be able to hear me. Missouri might be having a QSO party as well. Nebraska is. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Now he's just gone. Bands are weird. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Is that South Carolina? 
It's funny. In contests, the signal report is always 5-9. They don't, he can't understand. Kilo 4, Bravo, Bravo, Lima. Yeah, so in contests, they just want to get through as many contacts as they can, so they always give a 5-9 report, and then he obviously can't understand them clearly. 5-9 is the best signal report. I'm going to keep trying, though, even though my neighbor is running his long way. Part of the QRP game is striking out, not making any contacts, and that's what happened to me today um, and the other day, really. There might be a problem with my coax, I'm not exactly sure, but I know it was receiving while well. I heard stations in South America as well as Europe, and I heard stations from all over the U.S., including uh, Washington State and Maine, so uh, it receives well, but I don't know if there was a problem with my radio or not. I'm still happy because I got to show you how to make a quick and easy dipole out of some scrap wire and a simple connector. Uh, and I showed you how I got it up in a tree and I'm gonna try it out on my uh, IC7300 to see if it is a problem with my adapter. But anyway, for those of you who stick around to the end of my videos, which is about 30 to 40% of you, I've got a surprise. Uh, I hit 10,000 10, subscribers recently and I wanted to do something for for all the people who've subscribed to my channel. So I'm giving away a radio. Uh, I've got this Baofeng BF F8HP that I bought for one of my videos and I actually tested this in the video um, on a spectrum analyzer and determined that it's out of spec on the uh, UHF, I'm sorry, on the VHF side, on the two meter band, it's out of spec, but on the UHF side, um, it's fine. So if you want a UHF Baofeng radio, Go ahead and put in the comment section your call sign and UHF only. That's the comment, UHF only. So I know you're only going to use this on UHF. Uh, but I've never used this outside of the test. Uh, the antenna's never been on it. It's a, it's a brand new BF F8 HP. So uh, go ahead and put in the comment section your call sign and UHF only. Make sure your address is up to date in QRZ because what I'm going to do is, is get your address from QRZ from your call sign and then uh, send you the radio. So good luck. I'll randomly pick somebody in the next week and I'll pin their comments so you can come back to the video and see who won. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. Sorry I couldn't make a contact, but Georgia QSO parties next weekend and I plan to participate, so uh, should make a, a number of contacts, contacts next weekend. K4BBL, I'm clear.